Thank you. To Ma'am Teresia, thank you for having all of us here. Um, to the excellencies, we honor you. To the men of God that preach, thank you for such an amazing word that you brought to us. Um, to my dear friend and sister, Reverend Kathy, and your children, our heart reaches out to you. Um, you've been dear friends with us for so many years when, when, with my late wife. And um, I, was, I was ministering, I actually had my leaders meeting with all my leaders gathered in church. And um, this was Tuesday last week. And um, as we were in this meeting, I had my phone with me and um, I saw calls coming in from Dubai, from Nigeria, from Ghana. I mean, people, some people I haven't spoken to in so many years or months are calling me and I was wondering, why is everybody calling my phone? So I finished the meeting and I went into my car quickly, called one of them, uh, Reverend Eric Hemeku in Ghana, uh, who was also a dear friend of uh, Bishop Allen. And he said to me, hey, our brother is gone. I said, what? And, you know, went home that night. I couldn't sleep. My wife woke up in the middle of the night, saw me sitting up on the bed, just leaning on the pillow. And she says, babe, I said, man, this, this bishop is gone, man. Bishop is gone. So I stand here on behalf of all his friends. Um, he was a good man. Bishop was a great man. He was a fighter. Bishop was such a strong man. And he, was, he also enjoyed life. They were, the one thing I have learned from him is he knew how to enjoy life. I was telling them yesterday, in church, I, I ministered at uh, JCC yesterday, and I said, you know, uh, one time he came into Johannesburg and he said, please drive me to uh, Harley Davidson. I said, Harley Davidson? I know Harley Davidson makes bikes, uh, but I, I wasn't sure what we were going there to do. So I got there, he says he, he rides bikes. I said, you ride bikes. I said, those things are for white people. I said, what are you doing with bikes? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so... And I mean, he bought these helmets, and then next thing I saw a picture of him, and unfortunately, I was, watching, I was online with my late wife. We were just sitting together, and she saw Reverend Kathy and Bishop Alan on a bike wearing helmet. My late wife looked at it. He said, you see your mates. <laughs> your mates are enjoying life. All you do is read Bible, pray, and fast. <laughs> I said... I said, Bishop Alan has put me in trouble, you know. <laughs> Another time he came, he said to me, take me to a place called Macro. I took him to Macro, went to buy golf. Is it golf? I said, man of God, what are you doing with He said, I play golf. He said, he's going for how many holes? I said, which holes? What are holes? <laughs> I, I have not. Have, <laughs> you know, so he, he, was, he was a man that enjoyed life. He taught his friends that, look, man, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Say amen. So he, he really enjoyed life and, and he was a very serious man, you know, loved his friends, uh, anywhere he could be a support. I remember when my late wife passed, he flew into Johannesburg after the funeral and him and I had coffee and, um, you know, he gave me a lot of counsel, a lot of comfort and, and spoke into my heart and he also told me through that, you know, how he has been going through his ordeal and um you know the diagnosis and all that and you know strengthened me and said to me look you know i don't know how god has delivered me from this but you know my brother cheer up then i was still single you know thank god he has blessed me with a beautiful wife who i'm with here today pastor Bulelwa. amen so um i was still single he encouraged me and said look man serve the lord and um you know we 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 had held hands together one of the things that stood out for me many years ago i i was flying somewhere i still can't I'm, i've been trying to figure out where i was flying to i was from johannesburg and i was flying um, through kenyan airways uh, into another country and but at that time kenyan airways was not as organized as it is now uh, i believe they are better now amen uh, but it was many uh, this is i'm talking about almost 20 years ago so and um, I, I then I told him, I said, bro, I was in Kenya airport. And then I was still using Nigerian passport because I'm originally born from Nigeria, but now I'm obviously I have a South African citizenship. So, and I said, I flew into Kenya and I, I wanted to, uh, my, there was a delay in my flight for 12 hours. 
and I begged these immigration people to allow me in to rest in a hotel. And I mean, at this time, I could afford any hotel. I'm, I, you know, and, and I, I begged these people, they refused. And they made me stay in the airport for 12 hours. As I was leaving, I said, I will never come back to Kenya again all the days of my life. <laughs> so I called Bishop Alan. I say, your people made me suffer. He said, my brother, I will change that narrative for you. I'm going to invite you to Kenya and give you first class treatment. And that was the kind of heart he had to change that narrative. You know? And then um, one of the other things that, you know, always, uh, you know, I, I always speak about that, that stands out for me when it comes to that man. He was, he was such, such a, a man that had feelings for people. So I, I got sued in South Africa. Yeah, um, a few years, many years ago, this is almost, I think it's almost 10 years now, 2006, no, 2016, um, there about. I got, I got sued, you know, in South Africa, people, that's why pastors, you guys are blessed here. In South Africa, they sue you to collect back their offering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, that's true, that, I mean, yeah, they can sue like when people give big offerings, you give them a paper to sign that I gave it willingly with my mind in, in, in order, you know, that, so, that, so that after you have collected the offering, you will not get to be sued. So I was in court. A lady sued me. So I was in court. It was my turn to uh, almost go to the stand to defend my, myself. And, and Bishop Allen calls me. I said, bro, I'm in court, man. He says, please walk out. What I'm about to say to you is important. He said, one of our friends and his wife are in trouble. And, and I'm not there. I can't handle this. Uh, uh, this matter is a concern to me. I'm having sleepless nights for this. And I want you to take over this matter on my behalf. Please, whatever you do, resolve this issue for me. He was that kind of person that cared for others. I mean, called me out of court just because somebody is, I mean, I'm fighting my own battle. You are telling me to take over another battle. What kind of thing is this, you know? But that's the kind of friend he was. That if you had a battle, he was ready to take over. And if he was not there, he will find another person that would take over that battle. He was that kind of man. Thank God for giving us such a man for 57 years. We celebrate him and we celebrate his legacy. Thank you, Reverend Kathy, for being such a friend. I still always say to her, the first time I heard Bishop Alan preach, he was in Johannesburg, he came with Reverend Kathy. And I mean, Bishop Alan is preaching, and Reverend Kathy is shouting, preach to me, you are the man. I, I said, you know, I'm like... And then, <laughs> my wife is sitting, my late wife is sitting beside me. I looked at her, I look up, I, I, I'm trying to pass a message. To say, my friend, when I'm preaching, if I don't see you do this, <laughs> you, you, you are not, you are, yeah. So that was the kind, you know, you, you people were really a good team. You were, you were just an amazing team. You both loved each other. It was evident. You know, you both dress well. We, we on the other side, I, I love clothes. I dress well. I love to look good. So one of the things I do is because me and Al, uh, Bishop Alan followed each other, after every Sunday service, I'll just see him. There's a place he stands every Sunday to take picture. And I'm still going to take my picture there so I can show him that I took picture where he always take pictures. And I love you both. I love you. I love your children. And we want to say to you, I'm speaking now on behalf of our friends uh, all over the world and also our ministry, House of Treasures Ministries, all the way in Johannesburg, South Africa, that we will stand with you. Anytime you call, we'll be there. You know, the reason I'm here is one morning, I woke up early in the morning and she sent me a message and said, Apostle, how did you handle this? I'm hurting. How did you do this? You know, obviously when I lost my late wife, you know, so when I read that message, I said to my wife, we just, I mean, I, I remarried two years ago and we just had a baby. Our baby is one month old. I said to my wife, we are dumping this boy and we are going to Kenya. <laughs> so right now, I mean, yesterday, my mother-in-law called us, who was taking care of the baby. The baby, I, 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 I said, hey, quiet. We are, we are, we are here to, to, to see to our friend, amen, and bid him goodbye. God bless you. I love you all. Amen.
Thank you. Let's appreciate Apostle Felix Okor. It's amazing.